Yo ho ho ho, a pirate's life for me. But is it though? Pretty much everyone has dreamt about being a pirate at some point in their life. A life of freedom, high sea adventure, buried treasure, drinking rum, and harrowing ship-to-ship -ship naval battles. Stories about pirates have existed pretty much since boats took to water. However, movies ignore the many ailments that seafarers suffered. We're not just talking about death by cannonball or being forced to walk the plank. There were slower and more painful ways to die. So before you ditch the life of a landlubber and attempt to conquer the high seas, you'll want to pay special attention to this video. In the movies, we see pirate ships as grand vessels that roam the seas, filled with a motley crew of men and sometimes women, like the famous female pirate Mary Reed. In reality, pirate ships, or any ship from that era, were cramped, damp, and melting pots of disease and malnutrition. A quick warning, some of the illnesses we'll discuss have some pretty gross symptoms. A huge aspect of a sailor's life was and is spending months at sea. Spending this long away from shore made every sailor susceptible to one of the most common and deadly ailments in the form of scurvy. This disease was caused by a severe absence of vitamin C in the body. Pirate ships did store a lot of preserved food, but sadly, they rarely had access to fresh lemons, limes, or oranges. Because of this, it's estimated that over 2 million people died of this ailment between the 15th and 18th centuries. People with scurvy suffered from blisters that turned to ulcers, their gums rotted and turned black, and old wounds reopened. And this was just going on outside the body. Internally, people who suffered from scurvy dealt with blood leaking into their muscles, as well as dramatic psychological effects. Sufferers would have incredible and vivid dreams about food, only to be heartbroken when there wasn't any when they woke up. A 17th century expert on scurvy called it a falling down of the whole soul. Yeah, things just got dark. The pirate captain, Captain Hook, was known to have played a part in combating scurvy on his ships. However, it wasn't until 1795, during the Napoleonic Wars, that a British doctor helped keep scurvy at bay on ships by making sure sailors had some vitamin C with them. Have you had an orange today? Well, you know what they say, a bit of citrus a day helps keep the scurvy at bay. Speaking of food, everything they carried on board had to be pickled, fermented, or dried. If a voyage took longer than expected, or the food was lost, infested, or spoiled, you would think they could at least eat fish, right? Wrong. Many ancient sailors didn't know which fish was safe to eat, and some died at sea from making the wrong choice. So they created tests to see what was safe, like the Spanish sailors who would put a silver coin on a fish and thought that a discolored coin meant it was poisonous. Others simply threw the fish on deck to see if the flies started to dine away. No flies meant bad fish. Flies on fish? Hey, let's dig in. So many chose not to eat the fish or throw it back. Perfectly edible food ended up walking the plank while the sailors starved away. Something to remember about pirate ships is that they were typically filthy. Rats and fleas made their way aboard the ships along with the crew. While rats eating the food was clearly a problem, they also bit the crew. Due to this, many seafaring men dealt with scabies. And you know, scabies just sounds nasty. This is a condition where mites make their way under the skin and cause irritation, such as rashes and pimples. Keep in mind, in the 1700s, pirates couldn't just stop off at the local pharmacy and grab something to make it go away. In fact, a lot of the cures that people sold to get rid of the itch were little more than snake oil. But desperate men would pay almost anything for a promised cure. If you were lucky enough not to catch either the itch or scurvy, you were still very much at risk of catching dysentery, or the flux as some called it. 
Those who caught dysentery had to deal with cramps, nausea, vomiting, and bloody, watery poop, among other symptoms. Obviously, none of that sounds fun. But imagine having these symptoms during a thunderous storm at sea, or when you have to climb a 20-foot rigging. Pirates couldn't just call in sick and stay in bed. There were many ways to catch it on a pirate ship, too. Pirates could spread it by not washing their hands before preparing food, thus passing it on to the person eating the food. Plus, keep in mind that pirates didn't have their own rooms. At night, they all basically slept 18 inches from each other. So one case of the flux, as some called it, aboard a ship, could easily wind up with everyone on board being infected. These days, it can be treated with antibiotics. At sea in the 1700s, however, it didn't go away on its own. It was typically fatal. Those suffering from the illness got extremely dehydrated. Keep in mind that pirate ships had little fresh water aboard at best, so they couldn't drink clean water to rehydrate. The lack of fresh water aboard ships was a big part of why pirates were known to drink so much rum. The alcohol mixed with water made it safer to drink. Like some say, drinking rum before 10 a.m. makes you a pirate, not an alcoholic. Another thing to consider with pirate ships is that many lacked medical care. Pirate ships especially were lucky to have a doctor or surgeon on board their ship. Even if it meant kidnapping a doctor from another ship, such as when Captain Henry Morgan, the real guy the rum is named after, forced a Dutch doctor to join his crew after capturing the doctor's ship. The other thing is that the pirate ships rarely had enough medicine to go around if illness broke out on the ship. In fact, it was a lack of medicine that caused the famed pirate Blackbeard, aka Edward Teach, to hold the portside town of Charlestown, South Carolina hostage in return for chest of much-needed medicines. Speaking of Blackbeard, have you ever heard the term, the cure is worse than the disease? Well, hold on to that thought. To his credit, Blackbeard took great pains to keep his crew healthy. It was very common for pirates to contract syphilis, typically while ashore visiting the local brothel. If someone caught it, typical symptoms were a rash on the groin, fever, and sore throat, among others. It can also wreak havoc on the brain, nerves, eyes, and more. Syphilis can even get so bad that the bridge of the nose can collapse. When most pirates got to port, after months at sea, half-starved and exhausted, the last thing most were concerned with was any illness they might come back with. Oh, but that cure I mentioned? It has been discovered that Blackbird's ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge, had several medical devices on board one of them specifically for treating syphilis. Again, a warning before we go forward, because this is going to be rough. The device in question was a syringe that was used to inject liquid mercury into the urethra of the afflicted. Yikes! Shiver me timbers! I think I'll just have a plate of that poisonous fish. Today, we consider that practically stone-aged and barbaric, in 1717, however, it was modern medicine. Oh, how times have changed. What we know as the Golden Age of Piracy only lasted from 1650 to 1720. But it was during that 60-year time period that many of the stories we hear about pirates today originated from. Stories about them were first documented and compiled in the 1724 book, a General History of the Pirates by Captain Charles Johnson. Names like Calico Jack Rackman, Captain Kidd, Henry Morgan, and Blackbeard crossed from being men to myths. For many, a life at sea was an ideal existence. Considering the harsh living conditions we've spoke about, it's amazing that virtually anyone survived as a sailor. It was an unquestionably hard life filled with as much, if not more, hardships than adventures. Also, consider that for the famous pirate stories we know, countless other mariners have accomplished much but have been lost to history. So, what do you think? Would you be cut out for the life of a pirate? Or, do ye prefer to keep ye feet on land? <laughs>